Snake River behind me. I'm running into a headwind. The storm is coming. In the next two days, we're supposed to have over two feet of snow and got to get my run in before it starts snowing this afternoon. So kind of running, we'll go to pot for the next two days, but then after the storm, there's just going to be a new fresh layer that's just going to be dynamite for good, good running the rest of the week. But today, we're going to talk about how maybe what you've heard or been told as far as run form is, is flawed and how this can lead to tight hip flexors, overuse of the quad, knee trouble, shutting your glutes off, all the vicious cycles that we hear about. Um, let me get in the sun here so you can see me. So all the vicious cycle that might be contributing to some tightness, injury, and all that stuff that we've kind of been brainwashed to think is par for the course with running. And we're gonna debunk that. We're gonna get into some simple things just for you to look at with your running. So let's go right along the snake. And we're gonna dive into how this can help your performance, increasing your range of motion, increasing your gait, increasing your stride length, which will help your speed. All right, for a while now, I've been hearing this bald eagle and I think it's up here in a tree. Let's see how close we can get to it. See, it's up in that, right up in that tree. It's probably gonna fly away. I don't know if it's a bald eagle. It might be a golden eagle. Be ready. Yeah, that's a good. There he goes. Yeah, that was a golden eagle. You can hear him. How oh, he's heat disturbing him, but here he is, he's still over here. He's coming back at us. There's probably a kill down there that he's just kind of circling in won't fly completely away. So I'll let him be and going back to his breakfast. So I want to start getting in a little bit more climbing, especially now before the big storm. And while running conditions are still good, I'm gonna follow this climb all the way up. We're gonna go way, way over up on top of the, the little summit up there. So here we go. And while I'm doing this, getting more climbing in where every step can be a form of strength training, I'm really working on my leg and hip extension, which is what we're gonna talk about today with regards to run form, how you're feeling, tightness, all that junk that um, we don't have to have as runners. So like I mentioned, you may have heard either through other coaches, other run form systems out there, is that what we need to focus on is leaning and falling into gravity to run forward. And so this does two things that are flawed, is one, when we lean and use gravity, it causes a natural breaking with our stride and our landing. And two, and what I want to talk about today is that it can lead to the runner keeping their legs and their knees too bent, which puts a lot of stress on the quads, takes muscle activation away from the glutes, which then causes the hip flexors to have to stabilize and that's not their job, causing tightness. So. This is a vicious cycle that I see. We're gonna correct that today. One runner I'm working with right now with coaching, this is exactly what's going on. He came to me with swollen knees, a lot of runner's knee issues, and just not able to run really. And this was the culprit. Keeping the knees too bent, always overtaxing the quads, 
pulling the hip flexors in for stability, which again is not their job, causing tightness, causing more of the trouble, because now with tight hip flexors, you can extend the leg and the hips very well. So we're working on taking the stress off the quads and getting better leg extension. And what does better leg and hip extension do for you? One, it pushes your hip flexors on stretch, which helps spring you forward in a natural way. And what else happens with better leg and hip extension is you start to activate the glutes and pull them in for stability, allowing to have a more equilibrium state with how you use your muscles. If we're bent over, if we're leaning forward, keeping our knees too bent, and our legs too bent when we run, especially when we're running easy, that shuts our glutes off. So if we're doing that all the time, we're just creating more and more glute amnesia or shutting the glutes down, shutting them off. And you hear me say quite often is that a lot of times dysfunction, running dysfunction takes place when running poorly easy or when we're running slow. And a lot of us, most of the running we do is relatively slow. And so if most of what we're doing is slow and we're not very efficient at it, that creates this dysfunction. And why on the opposite end, running very, very fast sprints and hill repeats will help with this leg extension. And this is where the Moffatone method can kind of play with you a little bit, is that we need to get some faster running in for strength running to accomplish what we're talking about today. Okay, hold up. I think we have a winter snake laying in the trail. Let's go with a snake up on it, really. These winter snakes are so venomous. Come on, you fell for it. I know you did. So since this is kind of a little loose and hard running as far as in, in the snow, I'm running it as easy as I can to create some efficiency on the aerobic end. And with that, I'm really focused only on my forefoot strike and getting good leg extension. And that's the key is to get that good leg extension and hip extension when we're running easy. It's easier to do it when we're sprinting and doing faster efforts, which is the purpose also for doing it, to train that. But it's really, really hard if you're not used to doing this while you're running easy. So it just takes that mindset. Almost to the top. Winter wonderland up here. Storm's blowing in. You can see it coming in. It's warm. And this is where I'm stopping. Good, good long 10 minute climb. Not bad for February and winter. When it comes to getting this leg extension where every step is a form of strength training and taking away that tug and pull and tightness that's very common in a lot of runners, just start to have the awareness while you're out running easy. Are you keeping your legs too bent? Are you keeping your knees too bent? Or are you pushing off and getting a little bit of leg extension? We don't want the leg to go completely straight, but we want to get that action of when we strike the ground with a slight push off, to again, lengthen the hip flexors and activate the glute that helps propel us forward. Remember, it's that propulsion forward rather than leaning or falling into gravity that's healthy and is for performance. And so all of the strength program in Born to Run 2 the book is meant to help with this, but kind of try two things. Try skipping for height, which will help you get really good leg extension. Skipping for height. First, practice just your normal skipping so you can sequence your arms with your legs and relax a little bit. And then through time, get more explosive and get as high as possible with your skip, taking as many steps as you can. Extend your leg and be explosive and really get good at leg extension to get height. And again, remember drills and skills are help to help the real world become easier. And then a second one, which is a really, really good one. This will also be a great diagnostic of how good your strength and stability is from a true running perspective. And that's doing the running lunge. The run lunge packs a punch. 
This is a very controlled movement. Reach back and bring that knee up as high in front of you as possible. And the key is to activate the glute of the stabilizing leg and go straight with that leg. Come up straight and lock that leg out. That's your stabilizer. So we're working the stance leg and make sure you extend that leg up as straight as possible. And be sure to sequence your arms in a running motion as you perform. So try this, hope it helps, have the awareness, and as always, see it as a craft, see it as something you get better at through time. It's not just a decision to go out the door and do this. It takes practice to have muscle memory take hold. All right, over and out from Jackson Hole. Stay tuned for some, maybe some true winter running in the storm in the next two days. Thanks for watching over and out from Born to Run World. See you next time.